Hello everybody and welcome to the Sanctuary Christian Center. This is Pastor Sims and today I am going to be teaching on the book of Revelation. I'm going to teach on it every day uh, at 3 o'clock p.m. so I invite you into this study session with me. I'll get your pen and paper out. You will also find on our website, the Sanctuary Christian Center, you will find the notes every day for each chapter. I'm going to start out and just summarize and talk about a little bit about the uh, about Revelation, and then I'm also going to just give just just an overview of the Rapture, because the Rapture is not in uh, the Book of Revelation, and we need to have a discussion around that too. And so, just remember, every day at three o'clock, I invite you into this Facebook Live session on a study of the book of Revelation. I'm going to take the time out now and just invite some folk into the room as well, and then we'll get started. So just stand by. While I'm doing that, I'll just give you information about our church. We are the Sanctuary Christian Center. We are located at 5744 Highway 20 South, Covington, Georgia. And service times you will find on our website. The website is sanctuarycc.com. All of the pertinent information about us you will find on our website. And so if you would kindly go there and then share the information with others as well. And please just let everybody know, most of all, that we are teaching God's Word. Uh, on Wednesdays, uh, we have prayer live on Facebook Live. And then on Wednesday evenings, we study as a family, a body of believers, also on our lesson every week. So we are continuing in doing the ministry work for the Lord. And I just thought that this would be a great way for us to succeed and to move forward in sharing with you what we've studied thus far. We had already had it in our plans to continue on and study in this book, and so the Lord would lead me in this way to be able to share it with the masses, and I'm, I pray that you get most out of it as well, and please remember to provide me with your comments. Please send me your comments. Share your comments with me. I welcome those as well, and we're going to move forward now. I think I've invited enough people, and we're going to move forward. God bless you. God bless you. I believe I have a have everybody on here. I have a few people that are joining me right now. And so you'll have an opportunity to play it back as well. I don't want to have this as a lengthy time as well. So immediately I'm going to start each time when I come on and people will have an opportunity to play it back. And so the title today is that we're talking about is the rapture. So people will have an understanding of the times that we're living in and be blessed through the word of God. I was blessed as I was studying the word of God. And what really opened up the book of Revelation for me is when we began studying, I went to the first chapter, first chapter and the third verse, and then we're going to summarize the actual rapture. Uh, the, that verse says, Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. And we're living in this time and this, this, this dispensation as well. In this reign, this millennial reign, this time that we're living in, the 21st century that we're in. Uh, so we want to make sure that we are knowledgeable about the second coming of the Lord. And we have a true understanding of what that really means. When I read this verse of scripture, it, it, it just, uh, just opened me up in my spirit. And I began to understand uh, that blessed is the man that reads reads the revelation and also understands it. We are blessed. And so the Holy Spirit would say to me, we need to read Revelation and then work backwards and start reading into Genesis and moving forward. So I want to enlighten the people of God. That's all I want to do. I've been blessed. I believe that one of my gifts is teaching, and I want to be able to utilize that in this hour and this time. So let's move forward in, in the rapture and understanding what the rapture is. Um, and so it is in Christian eschatology, that means the doctrine of the last things that his coming. That is not just his second coming. This would be the rapture, but we get a view uh, and an understanding of his coming. Uh, this will occur to the millennial kingdom until we have that time in which uh, Jesus will uh, 
have uh, Satan in the pit and reign for a certain amount of years. And so we want to be able to understand what is he saying to us during this time. It's a thousand year reign of Christ on the earth. That's the approximate time. That we want to do, and that's in Revelation 20, verses 1 through 6. So we want to understand what this means. And so we, in order to understand that, we have to understand Scripture. We have to understand Scripture in times and events, and we daily, definitely need to have an understanding of a distinction between Israel and the church body, us as believers, as Gentiles. And we're going to cover all of this in detail as well. So I'm reminded... In the word, how it says over in Matthew, Matthew 24, 36. But that day and that hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. The day and the time of Christ's return, no one knows that at all. And so what he says for us as a body of believers that we have time now to get it right with him. In this time that we have during this pandemic, it is really a time of studying and preparation, especially for the uh, children of the Lord, servants of the Most High God. It is preparation time for us to get our minds aligned with the Word of God, to study the Word of God, pin it on our hearts, prayer time, get our lives together, pray over our families, just many things that we can do to know that we are totally equipped and we want to be able to know that. And we're only going to know things just in partiality. A lot of times there are occasions in which we as people, even as the children of God, we want to know it all. We do. Oh God, can you tell me this? God, can you tell me that? And then things don't happen. The manifestation of that that we want to know has not occurred. And so don't get despondent in it at all. The Bible tells us by Scripture, it says to us in Scripture, 1 Corinthians, starting at the in the 13th chapter, starting at verse 9, it says, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect comes, when the Lord comes, then that which is in part shall be done away with. We won't have to wonder about what's happening, but it is time for us to prepare now for his second coming and really for the rapture. The rapture is the time, is a different time, and that's what we're going to talk about as well right now. The rapture, what does that mean, the rapture? The word does not occur in the Bible. Christian soldiers is not in the Bible at all. It's a Latin term meaning carrying off, transport, a snatching away. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's taught in the scripture. That's how it is revealed to us. And so we have to be able to understand that it's an event and a time. Uh, the rapture, the church is an event in which God snatches away the believers of the earth in order to make way for the righteous judgment, his judgment to be poured out on the earth during the tribulation period, which goes for seven years. So we have to understand that. And in detail, we get to see that in the word of God when we turn to 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verses 13 through 18. Then we go to 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 50 through 54. And we're going to touch on those as well for people to be enlightened. We're talking about the will of God being done. A resurrection will occur for all the believers who have died. It will give uh, the believers glorified bodies. Our bodies will change. Uh, uh, so we'll take uh, from the earth all with all living believers. And also the living believers will have glorified bodies. So we're talking about the dead in Christ rising. And we're talking about those that are alive, that are in Christ, shall also be uh, caught up with him to meet him in the air. That is what we're talking about. So we have to know what the word of the Lord is saying. I'm going to read a verse of scripture for you. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 17. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, as I said. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And we will be with the Lord forever. 
And so we have to have make a distinction of the rapture and the second coming. The second coming is the time for judgment, the, that Christ will have placed judgment upon the on the earth, and then we will also, all of us, will be with Him forever in glorified bodies, and also in a new heaven. That is what He talks about in a new heaven. So we need to be able to understand that at the second coming, the Lord descends all the way to the earth. It says the Lord stands on the Mount of Olives, and that results in a great earthquake uh, followed by the defeat, the defeat of Satan and his enemies will be defeated. Satan is defeated. It isn't a song that we sing. It is the word of God, word of God. And so uh, Zechariah 14 chapter verses three through four reads this. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. This is just a prophetic speaking of and connecting also over in Revelation of the time of the great judgment and how Christ will come back for his Bride. We are called the bride. Christians are called the bride. Jesus is called the groom. And this is for anyone that don't have knowledge, uh, a Bible knowledge, that you'll be able to follow me as well. So I want to be able to state it in such a way to provide principles and understanding that we can all grasp and we'll all have an opportunity to understand this. What am I talking about? The, the rapture. The rapture, the doctrine. The doctrine of the rapture is really not taught in the Old Testament at all. And so Paul comes back and he highlights it and gives us information about it as he's talking to the Corinthian church as he does over in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 51 and 52. And for your reading, uh, I am also in the King James Version. I will let you know when I change the version so you'll be able to go to those versions to understand. But right now, I am in the King James Version. It says, listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will all... We will not all sleep, but we will be changed in the flash and the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trump will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. And so Paul is speaking to the church and ministering to the church uh, how uh, he was also excited about them understanding uh, the gospel because they were partakers, even though they were the Gentiles, they were partakers uh, in the Passover, they had gone to the feast and the time and had an understanding of who Christ was. And so it wasn't difficult for them to really become Christians, especially when Paul went to Corinth and he began to minister to the Corinthian body. And so that helped them. So the rapture of the church is a glorious event that we're talking about. It's a glorious event that we're talking about uh, um, that we as, as Christian soldiers should be longing for. It is the finality for us and we are free from sin. Free from sin, we will be in God's presence forever. When you read the Bible and I think about the angels and how they bow down before the Lord and they're crying at, the, at his feet and just crying out, holy, holy is the Lamb of God. When we read in the word of God as well, it states that we, us, humankind, mankind, we were made to glorify God. And so we need to understand that. And, and so often we have not taken our position and given him glory. We were made to glorify God. Let's understand that. That's the position that he's given us. Let's go into the word as we talked about uh, from the beginning to get an understanding of the rapture. So I'm going to be reading for your hearing now out of 1 Thessalonians. Again, the fourth chapter, verses 13 through 18, and we're just going to go through it and exegete this somewhat so we'll get a clear understanding of what these verses are saying to us today. And so we should be super excited as Christians about, oh, when Jesus comes and that trump sound, if we've got our life in order. Now, if we're ready, we don't know when he's coming, but our life should be in order. So it gives us an opportunity to live for him the more, to love him the more, to embrace his principles, to walk by faith and not by sight, to trust him and then find my place in God's word. There is a position for us 
in the word of God. I want us to be encouraged as I am giving instructions uh, according to his word. This is the word that we are just sharing. First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verses 13 through 18. If you just go there, you can go there as well. Get your Bible and go there, King James Version. But I would not have you ignorant. This is what Paul is saying to the Corinthian believers, uh, uh, Thessalonians this time, Thessalonians. I would not have you ignorant, brother, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, then so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And so that the ending part is what really grabs you too. Let's comfort each other. And so I pray that that scriptures, those scriptures will comfort you to know who we are in God and how we should be walking so that we won't be ignorant of what's happening and, and when the, the dead in Christ shall rise and, and shall ascend, he's given us the instructions as well here. So we, we, we don't have to debate over the rapture. We don't have to do that as Christians. And so let's not do that any longer. We don't have to debate all of, over it. We can find this in the word of God. We can it's the doctrine for us. It's a, a, a doctrine of comfort and hope for us. God wants us to comfort one another as we are thinking about his word and thinking about the day approaching. Let's think about that. And so he says, don't be ignorant of God's plans, Israel. Don't, don't at all. And so we can turn to the word over in Romans 11 and 25 and says, my brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be in the dark. This is the voice version about this mystery. I'm going to let you in on the plan so that you will not think too highly of yourselves. A part of Israel has been hardened to the good news until the full number of those outside the Jewish family have entered in. And so what God is saying to us as Gentiles, I give you an invitation to accept me as Lord and Savior. I give you an invitation to accept the gifts that he talks about over in 1 Corinthians in the 12th chapter. I give you a, 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 an opportunity to, to understand and to embrace the comforter, Emmanuel, the paraclete that abides with you once you lift your hands and surrender your will to me. That he said, he, he lets it, don't be ignorant at all. There's an opportunity even in this season. So he's not telling us to, uh, uh, to, to faint. He says, don't be weary in your well doing. Don't be weary. Even in this season, he says, don't be ignorant about spiritual gifts at all. He says they're, they're available for you. And now concerning spiritual gifts, he talks about that over in, in Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians in the 12th chapter. He says, don't be uh, 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 ignorant about suffering and trials because we have to understand the trials and the suffering don't last always for us. So he's talking to us. Paul is talking to us as Christian soldiers. Don't be ignorant about the position and the stance that we have as Christians. And so this gives me an opportunity to talk to my brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, let's pause for a moment. When we say yes to the will of God, a lot of times people think that it's just, wow, I've got Jesus. All the other things are going to stop. The trials won't be so heavy. The trials tend to get greater because now you have departed from the family of Satan over into the family of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the devil will attack you in areas that he know that you are the weakest in. So in order to be strengthened, this is for, for us that are new converts or those that are backsliders. So you have to, it is a must, it is imperative that you may partner with someone that is a Christian soldier, an ambassador in the Lord, a servant of the Lord, just saved. Someone just saved that can help you and, and pray with you 
have to be a consistent reader in the word. This is an opportunity for you to uh, gird yourself up and to be strengthened in the Lord. So there are great opportunities for us. Uh, uh, don't 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 think that that don't don't think that we will escape those those uh, challenges at all. He says, uh, I've given you an opportunity with a way of escape. He talks about it in Romans. I believe it's in the tenth chapter. He says, I give you a way of escape, and we have to understand that. And so don't. Don't think of, what does he say? It's over in 1 Peter, I believe it's the fourth chapter. Talks about um, uh, 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 concerning the fiery trials which, which try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. You are never alone in thinking that you are the only one that has gone through something. Someone else has gone through something greater than you. I want to let you know that. He says, don't be ignorant about the rapture and the second coming of Jesus Christ. Don't be ignorant because he tells us that over in 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter and the 13th verse, Jesus died. Paul is writing this. Paul wrote about the death of believers. He calls it sleep. He calls it sleep for us. It's just a temporary holding place until he comes back and the trump sounds and then we get to rise and to be with him forever. And so it's a temporary holding place for us because the body that we have is not the body that will reside in heaven. It cannot reside in heaven, he says. So, so the Bible talks about it in Ecclesiastes, the 12th, the 12th uh, chapter and the 7th verse, it says, And this body shall return to the dust. And, and then our spirits shall return to Christ from which, from heaven, from to God, from whence it comes. And so we have knowledge of that, of what's taking place in our lives as Christian soldiers, as, as people and believers. It's sleep, death. Paul calls death just sleep. We who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord, by no means perceive those who are asleep. The, the dead in Christ will rise first, rise first, and those who remain will be caught up to meet him in the air. The trumpet shall sound. It's an assembly that he's sounding an alarm for God's people. And so as God has, is, has a plan for then, he has a plan for now. And so he also says in the word of God, those that have an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. And now we, we really get to walk as the church today because we are not going into infrastructures. We should not be. And let's be mindful of that. Let's practice social distancing. Let's put that into practice. God will take care of his church. People still tithe. People still give your offerings. And, and let's just trust God together. We are better together. We are better together. So the trumpet will sound. It says the trumpet here is a, a, a call for the assembly of God's people. That's what he's talking about at that appointed hour. So this is the rapture. This is not the second coming of Jesus. This is the rapture. And we need to talk about the rapture first before we actually go into the book of Revelation because it does not speak about the rapture. There it talks about the tribulation time. So I want us to be, have knowledge of what the word of God is saying to us. And so let's turn now to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 50 through 54. 50 through 54. And it reads, King James Version now. I'm in the King James Version. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom. Not at all, it says that, the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, trumpet, for, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. We give God glory. For his word. So he says flesh and blood. The context means that our present bodies that we're talking about. The flesh and blood that we have. God is going to give us a new body. For the body that we have cannot go into heaven. This body will perish. 
And so we need to be able to understand that the word corruption that we're using in the word of God does not mean ethical corruption. I'm not talking about that. We're talking about a physical, material corruption. These bodies are subject to disease, injury, hurt, harm, decay. Uh, it's not suited for heaven at all. So he says, I'm going to change you in the moment uh, in the sounding of the alarm, I'm going to change you from corruptible that you would inherit incorruptible is what he's talking about. It's not a mystery. A mystery is simply to be understood by the spiritual, he says to us. So I am mindful of the word of God that if we continue to walk in the flesh, we will mind the things of the flesh. And so what God is saying for us as a body of believers, of sanctified believers today, I need you to elevate your mind into the spiritual realm. Read this word and understand what I'm conveying to you. Uh, he says sleep is just a, a softer way of describing and saying death for us. Death for us. He says, I'm going to transform your bodies. Transform your, your bodies at the return of Jesus Christ is what he's talking about. In a single moment, Jesus will gather his people. The dead in Christ shall rise first, he talks about. And then those that remain, those that remain. Now, there are conditions upon those. There's a caveat there. A condition upon those. Do we have our lives lined up with the word of God is what he's saying to us. And, and so if you don't understand, I want to be able to break it down into practical terms. Are we uh, walking in obedience in the word of God? Do we have the word of God pinned on our hearts that we can trust God, obey God, walk by faith, not by sight, live this life out that we talk about? And so often we've been talking about it, but now we're going to have to validate it in our walk. Many of us will be able to have to do that. We're going to have to validate it and what, how we live and how we walk. Uh, someone did something uh, the other day and sent a huge offering to our website. And it was a huge offering and we were very appreciative of it. But the guy called and said, I, meant, I sent it in error. I immediately went and, and, and called the other pastor to make sure that I got that money to that pastor. And the other pastor was just so overwhelmed. I said, no, we can't just talk about this gospel. We've got to live it. Just like your church is in need and that pastor wanted to make sure that that money got there, that other individual did, I wanted to make sure that you got what was due you. And that's the life that we have to live about. We talked about and we've been preaching on, we preached on the principles of sowing and reaping. If we sow, Hallelujah. Uh, God will allow us to reap at the appointed time. He says in due season, in due season, I believe that he has a season for all of us to be able to reap. And we're talking about now in finality in reaping during the rapture. That is what I'm talking about. In a single moment, he's talking about the last trump, the trump in God he's talking about. Not the trump of the angels over in Revelation 9, 11. We're going to cover that daily. We're going to go through the word of God, Revelation. I'm starting tomorrow on chapter one. We're going to go every single day, Monday through Friday, going through the word of God. This will be about our third time going through it. I'm enlightened and, 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 and by the Lord to, to go through this with the people of God. He says the rapture will involve an instantaneous transformation for us. An instantaneous transformation he's talking about. He says over in 1 John 3 and 2, he says, Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. This is what, what he says in the word. He, he fascinates me. He goes and he says, But we know that. When he shall appear, that's for the faith of us that believe God. Anybody believe God for this time that the word is talking about? He says, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Ooh, he talks about this. So the rapture, the rapture of the church is a glorious event, a glorious event. And so we have to prepare ourselves for that. Other than that, we live through the tribulation. Mm. And we're going to be able to talk about that. We should all be longing for this. This is the finality for us. We are free from sin. 
and we know that we will be in the presence of God forever. That is what we're living for. We're living for that time to be with God forever. That's what we're living for, to live in eternity. So church, we have an opportunity and a time to get it right now. So that is the rapture. We will find the rapture once again. We can find it in the word of God and go to the word of God. Over in 1 Corinthians 15, 50 and 54, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. That's the word. We have an opportunity. Hello, Lexi. Uh, have an opportunity to be able to uh, 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 read the word for ourselves. You, you can search the scriptures and, and, and you will find Jesus in the scriptures. Huh? These are Jesus says, these are they that testify of me. Uh, that's what he talks about. The scriptures, these are they that testify of me. So the word testifies of him. That's what we're talking about. So be encouraged. I've covered the revelation for you. Uh, or, uh, I'm sorry, the rapture for you. And uh, you'll have an opportunity to play this back or share it with others. But know that we will be on daily doing one chapter a day going through Revelation starting tomorrow, Monday through Friday. And if you're not able just to join us, you have an opportunity just to go to our website, the Sanctuary Christian Center, and you will be able to see it. Sorry, go to our Facebook page, the Sanctuary Christian Center, and you'll be able to see uh, the viewing of this tape. I'm going to leave them up. And every day, for those that are following, I will provide you with a link for the current chapter. Uh, every morning you will be able to go in and see a link for the current chapter. The, the previous chapter will be gone and then I'm going to go in and put a new link in because I don't want it to be confusing to people. A new link every day for that chapter that we will be studying at 3 p.m. Eastern Time every single day, Monday through Friday, until we conclude with the book of Revelation. I pray that you were encouraged and inspired by the word as we are teaching God's word to God's people. And once again, just join me here tomorrow. God bless you all. And most of all, be encouraged and stay safe. God bless you all.